Complete Works of Swami Vivekananda. Volume 2. Reports in American Newspapers. These reports from American newspapers have been given exactly as they were in the original. The wrong spellings of proper names, faulty, punctuation and grammar have been left uncorrected. Publisher. Ideals of Womanhood. Brooklyn Standard Union, January 21, 1895. Swami Vivekananda, after being presented to the audience by Dr. James, President of the Ethical Association, said in part, The product of the slums of any nation cannot be the criterion of our judgment of that nation. One may collect the rotten, worm-eaten apples under every apple tree in the world, and write a book about each of them and still know nothing of the beauty and possibilities of the apple tree. Only in the highest and best can we judge a nation, the fallen are a race by themselves. Thus it is not only proper, but just and right, to judge a custom by its best, by its ideal. The ideal of womanhood centers in the Aryan race of India, the most ancient in the world's history. In that race, men and women were priests. Say Bhattimani, Sahadharmani, or religionists, as the Vedas call them. Their every family had its hearth or altar, on which, at the time of the wedding, the marriage fire was kindled, which was kept alive, until either spouse died, when the funeral pile was lighted from its spark. The man and wife together offered their sacrifices, and this idea was carried so far that a man could not even pray alone because it was held that he was only half a being, for that reason no unmarried man could become a priest. The same held true in ancient Rome and Greece. But with the advent of a distinct and separate priest class, the co-priesthood of the woman in all these nations steps back. First it was the Assyrian race, coming of Semitic blood, which proclaimed the doctrine that girls have no voice, and no right even when married. The Persians drank deep of this Babylonian idea, and by them it was carried to Rome and to Greece, and everywhere woman degenerated. Another cause was instrumental in bringing this about, the change in the system of marriage. The earliest system was a matriarchal one, that is, one in which the mother was the center, and in which the girls acceded to her station. This led to the curious system of the Polyanders, Polyandrus, where five and six brothers often married one wife. Even the Vedas contain a trace of it in the provision, that when a man died without leaving any children, his widow was permitted to live with another man, until she became a mother, but the children she bore did not belong to their father, but to her dead husband. In later years the widow was allowed to marry again which the modern idea forbids her to do. But side by side with these excrescences a very intense idea of personal purity sprang up in the nation. On every page the Vedas preach personal purity. The laws in this respect were extremely strict. Every boy and girl was sent to the university, where they studied until their twentieth or thirtieth year, there the least impurity was punished almost cruelly. This idea of personal purity has imprinted itself deeply into the very heart of the race, amounting almost to a mania. The most conspicuous example of it is to be found in the capture of Chitto, Chitta, by the Mohammedans. The men defended the town against tremendous odds, and when the women saw the defeat was inevitable they lit a monstrous fire on the marketplace and when the enemy broke down the gates 74,500 women jumped on the huge funeral pile and perished in the flames. This noble example has been handed down in India to the present time, when every letter bears the word 74,500, which means that anyone who unlawfully reads the letter, thereby becomes guilty of a crime similar to the one which drove those noble women of Chitto to their death. The next period is that of the monks, it came with the advent of Buddhism, which taught that only the monks could reach the nirvana, something similar to the Christian heaven. The result was that all India became one huge monastery, there was but one object, one battle, 
to remain pure. All the blame was cast on to women, and even the proverbs warned against them. What is the gate to hell? Was one of them, to which the answer was, woman. Another read, what is the chain which binds us all to dust? Woman. Another one, who is the blindest of the blind? He who is deceived by woman. The same idea is to be found in the cloisters of the West. The development of all monasticism always meant the degeneration of women. But eventually another idea of womanhood arose. In the West it found its ideal, in the wife, in India in the mother. But do not think that the priests were out of irresponsible for this change. I know they always lay claim to everything in the world and I say this, although I am myself a priest. I'll bend my knees to every prophet in every religion and climb, but candor compels me to say, that here in the West the development of women was brought about by men, like John Stuart Mill and the revolutionary French philosophers. Religion has done something, no doubt, but not all. Why, in Asia Minor, Christian bishops to this day keep a harem? The Christian ideal is that which is found in the Anglo-Saxon race. The Mohammedan woman differs vastly from her Western sisters, in so far as her social and intellectual development is not so pronounced. But do not, on that account, think that the Mohammedan woman is unhappy, because it is not so. In India woman has enjoyed property rights since thousands of years. Here a man may disinherit his wife. In India the whole estate of the deceased husband must go to the wife, personal property absolutely, real property for life. In India the mother is the center of the family and our highest ideal, she is to us the representative of God, as God is the mother of the universe. It was a female sage who first found the unity of God, and laid down this doctrine in one of the first hymns of the Vedas. Our God is both personal and absolute, the absolute is male, the personal, female. And thus it comes that we now say, their first manifestation of God is the hand that rocks the cradle. He is of the Aryan race, who is born through prayer, and he is a non-Aryan, who is born through sensuality. This doctrine of prenatal influence is now slowly being recognized and science as well as religion calls out, keep yourself holy, and pure. So deeply has this been recognized in India, that the we even speak of adultery in marriage, except when marriage is consummated in prayer. And I and every good Hindu believe, that my mother was pure and holy, and hence I owe her everything that I am. That is the secret of the race, chastity.